Hello everyone. Good evening. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today let's learn about retinopathy of prematurity. So going on to the retinopathy of prematurity as the name suggests it commonly occurs in children who are born less than 32 weeks of gestation. So the definition here it is nothing but it is a vasoproliferative disorder. So it is a vasoproliferative disorder of your retina among your premature infants. So it is vasoproliferative. What is vasoproliferative? It is nothing but your vessels, your new vessels, blood vessels are being proliferating more in more amount in the retina, most commonly in the preterm babies. So it is a vasoproliferative disorder of retina among your preterm babies. So most commonly or the most common age group that is affecting are when the child is born less than 32 weeks of gestation or when the child's gestation age is 32 weeks or more, more than or equal to 32 weeks but with the risk factors that is the child is having an ICU admission which is requiring oxygen supplementation like when the child is going in for BPD or when the child is having sepsis. These are the additional risk factor in which the child can get your uh, retinopathy of prematurity. So when they ask your definition, it is nothing but it is a vasoproliferative disorder of retina that is commonly occurring among your preterm infants. And here we have classification of retinopathy of prematurity. Your classification is mainly based on IC or OP. IC or OP is nothing but it is international classification of retinopathy of prematurity. This uh, classification is mainly describes the vascularization of retina and also it characterizes the ROP by its position that is by its own. So it characterizes position of retina, I mean position of your ROP. Next it's severity. Severity only we state as like stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4 and stage 5. And third based upon the extent. Okay, so IC ROP, nothing but your international classification of ROP that describes the vascularization of retina. It characterizes this vascularization by your position, severity and your extent. So, we will go into the detailed classification of ROP. First is based upon the position, that is your location, that is the zone. Here, this one, um, uh, I will show it in this color. This is, this one is nothing but your optic nerve. Here, full dark circle is your macula. This one will be your zone. So, opti will define your zone 1. So, the zone 1 is defined as, it is nothing but a circle. So, this is a circle with optic nerve in the center and the radius between this optic nerve and this macula. So, twice the radius between the optic nerve and mac uh, your macula uh, will, will form the circle. So, it is nothing but with optic nerve. This is ON is nothing but your optic nerve that is present in the center of the circle with the radius of twice the distance between optic nerve and macula that is your zone 1 next this green color marking is your zone 2 so zone 2 is nothing but another a concentric circle concentric circle in the sense another one circle of the same i mean of uh, the same direction of your zone 1 so it's a concentric circle from your edge of the ah uh, from your edge of the zone 1 to this is nasal this is a nasal part and this is your temporal part to your oro serrata temporally and to the equator temporally okay so zone 2 is nothing but a concentric circle it's a concentric circle from the edge of the zone 1 to oro serrata nasally and equator temporally next we'll talk about this red color region that is your zone 3 so zone 3 is a concentric one so zone 3 is a lateral crescentric one which is extending from your zone 2 to this is will be this will be your oro serrata 
temporal so it is extending from your uh, what is it called zone 2 to oroserrata temporally is called your zone 3 so we have three zone so first one zone is here i mean sorry zone 1 where the optic nerve will be in the center and the radius of i mean radius between your optic nerve and the macula twice that its distance will form the circle around the optic now that is your zone one zone two is your distance is a concentric circle it is beyond your zone one that is extending to the oroserrata nasally and to the equator temporally your zone three will be a lateral crescentric circle from the zone two till your oroserrata temporally so this is your locations okay you have to remember this next going on to the severity that is your staging staging it is very easy you can remember easily so stage one is nothing but a presence of white demarcation line so this is a line here so it is just a line so when there is a line only white demarcation line that is stage one so this demarcation line is between your a vascular retina and vascular this is vascular retina and this is a vascular this is vascularized retina and this is vascularized retina so it's the demarcation line between your a vascular retina and vascularized retina in stage 2 this is in stage two. in stage 2 this line becomes a thick ridge this line forms a thick ridge like uh, structure that is your stage 2 and this is your stage 3 in stage 3 you have a extra retinal fibrovascular proliferation so this is your extra retinal fibrovascular proliferation so write it here it is nothing but your extra fibrovascular this is stage 4 in stage 4 you have partial detachment of your retina so in stage 4 you have partial retinal detachment so stage 4 also you have stage 4a and stage 4b stage 4a is nothing but that is not involving macula b is involving macula next you have stage stage 5 is but your complete retirement it is your compound of retina will be stage 5 next based upon the extent based on the extent here extent of rop is described in your clock hours this is your clock hours so it is 12 3 6 9 okay so each of the clock hours will have a 30 days fine so extent of rop is described in your clock hours a total of 12 clock hours in this 12 clock hours each clock hours will have a 30 degree of uh, the distance okay so that is how you define your extent uh, based upon your ic or op uh, classification next you have another term called as plus disease so what is plus disease meaning it is a presence of dilatation and tortuosity of your retinal vessels at the posterior pole so you can remember p for p that is involved your posterior pole for the posterior pole of eye in posterior pole of the eye what do you see you see a dilatation and your velocity of retinal blood vessel that's called as rop plus disease so this way we classify your retinopathy of prematurity first one based upon its location that is based upon the zone it is zone one zone two and zone three the second based upon the severity you have stage one stage one where you have only a white demarcation line in stage two you have a complete ridge in stage three you have a extra retinal fibrovascular proliferation in stage four it is partial detachment in stage five it is a complete detachment next based upon the extent we have around 12 clockers each clockers will be having a 30 degree uh, this uh, 30 degree uh, do you, I mean 30 degree distance or 30 degree extent will be present next you have this plus disease plus disease is nothing but presence of your dilatation and tortuosity of retinal vessels in the posterior pole of the eye next when do you screen the for rop so what is the exact age uh, when do you screen for the rop in the chat so first screening examination so first screen first screen examination should be carried out at 32 weeks mensural age or 4 weeks of postnatal age whichever is late you have 
डू योर आर ओ पी स्क्रीनिंग वाई बिकॉज नॉर्मली योर रेटिनल ब्लड वेसल्स विल फॉर्म विल और विल डेवलप टू द नेसल साइड बाई अराउंड फोर्टी वीक्स एंड टू योर टेम्पोरल साइड बाई अराउंड फोर्टी फोर वीक्स सो यू हैव टू स्क्रीन फॉर आर ओ पी बाई थर्टी टू वीक्स ऑफ पोस्ट नेचुरल एज और फोर वीक्स ऑफ योर पोस्ट नेचुरल एज विच अवर इज लेटर सो दैट इज योर रूल नेक्स्ट हाउ डू यू फॉलो अप so the follow up of our uh, this uh, retinopathy of near prematurity is normally required every one to two weeks you do the follow depending upon the severity of rop when do you stop this screening of rop so when do you terminate the screening or uh, the screening of rop is terminated once there is a complete vascularization so once there is a complete vascularization of retina without rop or if the rop has shown your regression then you terminate your screening next what is the criteria to screen the child so criteria to screen the child is gestation age we have read here it is 32 weeks when the child's gestation age is less than 32 weeks you screen or when the birth weight of the child is less than 100 kg also you screen what are the additional criteria additional criteria meaning if the child's gestation age is between 32 week to 34 week or if you don't know the gestational reliable gestational age or your birth weight is not known then you can screen the child is having any one of the following that is the child has been see up ventilation for uh, see up or ventilation for any okay second if the child have been, has been administered oxygen there has been a oxygen therapy for about 2 4 hours third when the child is on a ionotropic support okay fourth when the child is anemic and has acquired blood then you can for the when the child is having sepsis mainly culture causes sepsis then you have to screen for rop so criteria for screening rop is when the child's gestation age is less than 32 week or birth weight is less than 1.5 kg you have to screen for rop additional criteria are when the child's gestational age is between 32 to 34 weeks or if this reliable gestation at birth is not known uh, then you have to screen if the child is having a cpap or a ventilation for any duration or the child is on oxygen for about 24 hours duration or if the child is on your ionotropic support or if the child has received blood transfusion or the child had a culture positive sepsis then you have to screen for rop next what is the treatment modality for your retinopathy of prematurity it is your laser ablation where will you do the laser ablation so laser ablation is mainly in the peripheral normal avascular region that you remember so it is mainly a peripheral normal a vascular not vascular if you do a ablation in your vascularized retina it will lead to bleeding so you have to do in your a vascular retina so it is a normal a vascular retina so when you do a ablation in this a vascular retina it will decrease the hypoxic so there will be a decrease in the hypoxic drive of retina so thereby decrease your VEGF. So VEGF is being decreased. VEGF is nothing but your vascularized endothelial growth factor. When your VEGF is decreased, there will be a decrease in your proliferation of. This is a treatment modality or a, a treatment um, uh, treatment modality behind giving ablation towards the a vascular retina. Okay. This modality, I mean this a ablation is carried out by two modalities. One you can use, or you can use a diode laser. But now we are mostly using diode laser. Diode laser is being used. This cryotherapy has been replaced by your diode laser. Why? Because the, this diode laser will have a lower rate of post-operative systemic and of ocular complications. Next, you have another one more treatment modality that is your bevacizumab. So bevacizumab is your bevacizumab is your uh, anti VF. This can also be used only when the laser photocoagulation fails. Thank you so this is about your retinopathy of prematurity